So, what up? It's your girl, Corinne. Oh my god. So, I am really hated right now. Now, so, since I've come out as pro-life, I have gotten a lot of heat. A lot of people hating hardcore. Friends, family, coworkers. Um, literally, people act like they're going to catch pro-life from me. <laughs> it's an issue. Like, people won't associate themselves with me anymore because they don't want other people to think they're pro-life. Cool. I didn't realize being pro-life was so bad, but people have been saying to me, how dare you become pro-life when you yourself use the choice to have an abortion? But it's because of my abortion that I am now pro-life because now I know all the procedures. I've been to the facilities. I've been to Planned Parenthood. I've witnessed everything myself and I've researched. Even my job has said to me that I have to make a whole new Instagram strictly for that job because... It is bad for business. Politics is just no bueno because then half the audience is gone if they don't agree with you. I understand business. What aggravates me is that this is something that I deal with every single day of my life because I've experienced this. I've experienced abortion. So when people say to me, Corinne, why can't you just stop talking about it? Let it go. And I'm like, wait, what? I don't know if this video is going to get me in trouble or not. I, I wish I could go back in time and I can't. But if I, if, if one girl that's pregnant right now and is scared out of her mind, if this video can help her in any way and that baby is saved, it'll be all worth it. So because I'm a nice lady and I'm not closed-minded like a lot of you think, um, I asked my pro-choice friends on my Instagram to comment on a post saying why they are pro-choice. And I got a lot of answers. Um, a lot of ones that I figured I was going to get. And then a lot that were really heartbreaking and heart-wrenching and sad. And this is the thing, is abortion is not simple. It is something that can damage a woman and kill a life. So I have a few reasons to why someone may be pro-choice. Uh, so let's get started. Number one, it's not a baby, it's a clump of cells, it's a fetus, it's not a human being yet. Most abortions happen in the first trimester. Why do you care? Well, it's scientifically proven during conception the zygote cell is formed and made by fertilization, creating a unique human life. It has its own DNA, its own blood supply, and once fertilization occurs, your baby's genes and sex are present. It's there, it's gonna tell you, dude, it's a boy, a girl. And now people will say, well, Crin, it still sells. It's not a person right now. Okay, it's an embryo. Um, well, an embryo, if you look it up, which I had to, it's an unborn or unhatched offspring in the process of development, in particular a human offspring during the period of approximately the second to eighth week after fertilization, after which it usually is termed fetus. What's a fetus? A fetus is an unborn offspring of a mammal, in particular an unborn human baby more than eight weeks after conception offspring is a person's child or children okay so and then people are like okay Corinne, that's all great and grand but it's still just a clump of cells it's like this big but the the point that i'm making is doesn't matter how small it is doesn't matter if it is an embryo a fetus it it could be a baby the reason why it's a human is not only because of DNA, but it's also a whole human in the sense that if you give it nutrients, the environment to live, which is your uterus, and time, it will develop into a what? A human. Why is it when we find organisms on Mars or life on Mars, like cells or whatever, we call it a life. We're like, oh, we found life on Mars. Okay, well, when I'm pregnant, I look like I have Mars. But like, why is there no life inside me? It's just cells. Confused. What happens in the first trimester? Well, 20 days before a woman even knows she's pregnant, the heartbeat begins. 21 days circulatory system is being formed. Three weeks, the brain, spinal cord, first nerve cells are being formed. Four weeks, the face develops, eyes, ears, nose, digestive tract, and nervous system are beginning to form. Eight weeks, it has all the organs that a full-term baby will have. The heart is functioning, the bones begin to form, and at 12 weeks, which is usually the time when, uh, they say like eight to 12 weeks is the norm for when a woman gets a first trimester abortion. Um, 12 weeks, the baby has tooth buds, fingernails, toenails. 
immature kidneys, external genitalia is forming, and the fetus can now move in the amniotic fluid and have receptors on its genitals, palms, and soles of its feet. You can say it's not a human, but from what everything I just said, I mean it's a human. Next is viability. Viability should be the standard. Okay, so when you're saying around 22 weeks a baby can live outside of the womb, that's when they are human and you cannot abort. But the funny thing about viability is, is that when the baby is born, it's still not viable. It can't live on its own. You need to use your body to get up in the middle of the night to feed this baby. You need to use your body to care for this baby. The baby cannot eat, drink, and change its diaper all by itself. It's not viable. I mean, my three-year-old's not viable. She runs around like a nut. If I were to leave her here by herself for a whole day, she, no bueno, I, I would go to jail. Some may say, well, before it's viable, it lacks human autonomy, self-consciousness, and rationality. Okay, so let me give you these examples. If, um, let's say a woman needs an iron lung to breathe, does she lack autonomy so you can just kill her? What about someone that's in a coma? They lack self-consciousness, right? So that means you can just kill them? Or what about a toddler who lacks rationality? Should you just kill him? No. So just saying you can kill a baby or, or a fetus before it's viable it isn't justified. Next one, I'm not ready for a baby. You shouldn't make me keep it. I'm trying to go to school and I need to go to college. That's real talk. That's real life because that's one of the major reasons why I had my abortion because I wanted to continue my career. I thought I couldn't have a career and a baby at the same time. But see, life is all about restriction of choice on behalf of responsibility. We are taught this as kids, that for every action, there's a reaction. You have sex, you get pregnant, there's your, there, there it is. There's your consequence. You got preggers. You can't just kill it because of an inconvenience. You're, you know what I mean? So for every action, there's a reaction. For every behavior, there's a consequence broken down into the simplest form. When we make a choice about how to act or what to do, there is a consequence, sometimes good or bad. Next one, the baby could grow up in poverty. The adoption care system is horrible. These are just some things that I hear. Uh, kids would grow up with a disability. It has Down syndrome. I don't want to put this child in the middle of all this. I don't want my child to have a disability. Well, we are not going to fight about the adoption care system or the foster system because we all know that, you know, we could do better there. But because they aren't the best environment doesn't mean you can kill a baby and not give them any chance at all to succeed. There are kids in bad circumstances now. It doesn't mean you can go to them and kill it. I would love for somebody, well, no, I don't want anyone to do this, but just like go talk to a child who's up for adoption, who's in the foster care system, and tell them they were better off aborted. They were better off dead than being there. That's horrible. There are plenty of amazing, successful people from bad circumstances, like Steve Jobs, Tiffany Haddish, um... <laughs> Ric Flair, let's go. What would you do without Ric Flair? You can't just kill something because of the environment. In the case of rape and incest, rape is disgusting. It's a horrible act, rape and incest. It's all around tragic and horrible. Pro-life, for me anyways, I'm like, listen, you want to make abortion legal for rape and incest and for the woman's health. Fine. I'm okay with that. But when I do that, I then totally get rid of all of the reasonings to why I want to get rid of abortion. Because it's still a human, it's still a life inside of the rape victim. It then gives other people the right to abortion. At the same time, I don't agree with that because I feel like if you just willingly have sex, it's, it's different because you, that's your responsibility, whereas the rape victim, she had no say in it at all. So a lot of people that stand with the pro-life is that you cannot kill a rapist, you know, you can't. If they get out of jail, you can't legally kill them. So if you can't kill them, why are you going to kill the baby that is innocent and had nothing to do with any of it? Next one is to save a woman's life. No one I've ever talked to from the pro-life community has ever said that nope the woman has to die the woman's gonna die the baby needs to live the, mo the mother dies we don't care about the mother no one says that we are pro-women pro-baby pro-everybody so if the woman has cancer and needs to get chemo we don't think that 
it's aborting the baby if she gets chemo. We think it's abortion if she decides to abort the baby before she gets chemo. But if she needs to help her body, and if that result is that the baby dies, it's tragic, but you're not forcing the baby out. You are not intentionally killing the baby. You're using something to help you live. So we don't think that's abortion one. And anytime a woman is having issues with their pregnancy, it's normally towards the end of the pregnancy in the third trimester. And with that being said, it's actually safer to deliver the baby. So if a woman has extremely high blood pressure resulting in toxemia, preeclampsia, it's most frequently occurring in the third trimester. Um, along with diabetes and things like that, they, they can have an early delivery. But abortion is not something that you have to do. And only six to 8% of all pregnancies are high risk and have complications. All right, this is my favorite one. This one is my favorite, my favorite, what, favorite, favorite, what? My body, my choice. Bodily autonomy, bruh. Well, obviously you have a uterus, you know, those, those things are what creates a baby. Men don't have that. So, I mean, I don't know what to say like that. You create children. If you do believe it's your body and your choice, I'm going to ask you these two questions. What do you mean by that? Are you saying that the the fetus, the baby itself, is a part of your body? That would then mean like it's like a, kind of like a kidney, like it's a part of your body. Like then you would have 20 toes and 20 fingers and you'd be half boy, half girl if you have a boy in there. And So that doesn't make any sense to me. But this one I can see where people are coming from. It doesn't matter if there's a human inside of me. I have a right to get rid of it because it's using my body. Okay. So then if you agree with that, then you must also agree with these three things. Abortions can happen at any point in pregnancy. Zero restrictions. It means it doesn't matter. The fact that it's a human doesn't matter because it's your body. It has no rights to be in there. Even though you put it there because you had sex. Back in the 50s and 60s, there was this drug, I can't pronounce it, and I'm not going to try, but it's going to be right here for you, okay? So you can figure it out. Thermondehyde, phlalidomide. Yep, can't do it. Um, God, I was looking kind of smart just for a minute. But it was used for morning sickness, but women found out there was actually helping their morning sickness, but giving birth defects, so or the baby would die. So they made it illegal. Now, but if you believe it's your body, your choice, and that human, it doesn't matter, then you would then say, no, it, it shouldn't be illegal. Why is it illegal now? No, it should be illegal because my body, like, I'm sick. I need it. Morning sickness, nausea. Now, this does not compare to cancer. So please don't even put that in the equation. Cancer can kill you. Morning sickness cannot. So also you'd agree with this. Women should be able to intentionally take that drug if they want to because maybe they have a daughter or son that has a birth defect. So they want to purposely do that to their new baby that's inside of them because they want them to match. I know this sounds crazy, but it's you have to agree with these if you think that it's your body, your choice. People also say, I should have the right to refuse to let anybody use my body to live or to be used as life support. So the most famous analogy would be the violinist that is uh, by Judith Jarvis Thompson. And bear with me because this is gonna take a second and just kinda, you'll figure it out. You wake up in the morning and you find yourself back to back in bed with an unconscious violinist. A famous unconscious violinist. He has been found to have a fatal kidney ailment and found out that you alone have the right blood type to help. So they have therefore kidnapped you. And last night, the violinist circulatory system was plugged into yours so that your kidneys may be used to extract poisons from his blood as well as your own. If he is unplugged from you, he will then die. But in nine months, he will be recovered from his ailment and then you can safely unplug him from you. You can now unplug yourself from the violinist even though this will cause his death. This is due to the limits on rights of life, which does not include the right to use another person's body. So by unplugging the violinist, you do not violate his rights to life, but merely deprive him of something, the use of your body to which he has no right. If you do allow him to go on using your kidneys this is the kindness on your part and not something he can claim from you 
as his due. For the same reason, abortion does not violate the fetus's legitimate right to life, but merely deprives the fetus of something. The non-consensual use of the pregnant woman's body and life support functions to which it has no right. Thus, by choosing to terminate the pregnancy, concluding that a pregnant woman does not normally violate the fetus's right to life, but merely withdraws it the use of her own body, which usually causes the fetus to die. So we can agree. No one has the right legally to be hooked up to somebody else, right? Um, even, let's say, it's your brother or sister. Legally, we can't force someone to be an organ donor. Um, so we can agree on that, right? Organ donation versus pregnancy is very different because there's responsibility behind it. With the violinist story, the woman is kidnapped against her will and is hooked up to the violinist. This isn't her fault. Pregnancy, though, you and your partner had consensual sex that could lead to pregnancy. So that is your fault. So think of this analogy. Every time you press a button, you get a pleasurable experience, right? So like imagine like a, a big, like imagine a vending machine. You go up to press the button and you have a pleasurable experience. Yes, this is simple way of explaining sex. Um, but sometimes when you let go of the button after your pleasurable moment, a baby may come out of the vending machine. <laughs> so a man does it, okay? He doesn't care. He doesn't want a baby, but he really badly wants that pleasurable experience. So what does he do? He presses the button. He gets his pleasurable experience. And then boom, a baby came out. Oh no! Should he leave it and let it die? He can't because he participated in the act that could cause him to have responsibility of another human. Now he has to either take it, give it up for adoption, or kill it. That all ties into responsibility, but responsibility wouldn't work with rape or incest. So here's another thought experiment. Imagine there's a woman, she wakes up in a cabin one day and there was a huge blizzard and she's stuck there and can't go anywhere. She's terrified because just three weeks ago she had a baby. She goes into the kitchen and finds a note. The note says, don't worry, you're safe and so is your baby. There's plenty of food, water and supplies for you and the baby, including formula for the for six weeks that you are stuck here. She then thinks, oh my God, where's my baby? Oh my gosh, where, if, she, if the baby is safe, like where is he? And so she goes into the next room. When she runs into the room, she finds a baby, but it is not her baby. So she legally have to feed that baby all of the formula from the kitchen? If she doesn't feed the baby with the formula, the baby will die. So she gives the baby the formula. What's worse, feeding the baby formula or the baby dying? Now, what if there was no formula? This woman just had a baby, so she's lactating. Should she legally have to feed this baby with her breast milk until the six weeks is up? Well, why should I have to feed the baby with my body? You know, like, what? that's not fair. So then that you weigh intimacy versus baby dying. So what if the note says this? If you kill the baby right now, you can be rescued immediately. Can she cut up the baby? Can she kill the baby? What about putting the baby outside and he'll freeze to death due to the environment? Well, if you said no both those things, you should see what an abortion is because that is the abortion. The, abor the abortion is where they tear the baby out limb by limb or vacuum it out and they take it out of the environment of the womb and it dies. So I hope I answered a lot of your questions. If I didn't, please, please comment below. I think abortion should be illegal, but I also am not going to judge someone if they choose to get an abortion tomorrow. I am not here to judge anybody. I'm just here to state facts. I'm also going to list below for any woman that feels like she is in a pregnancy crisis, you are pregnant and you don't think you can actually provide for this baby. You are nervous. You don't know what to do. You have so many questions. You kind of want to keep the baby, but you don't know what you want to do. There are pregnancy centers for you that actually will give you options and help you with rent, with formula, with guidance, with counseling, with everything, daycare, schooling. They will help you. So don't be afraid to get help. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not here to judge. I'm just here to help. So if I can save one baby in the process or help any woman in the process, I will.